Welcome back to daytime. Now, now that we got our dose of marriage and what marriage is all about, I mean, that was a lot of information, a lot to digest, and then it was fun to watch too. I guess. And, you, and you need some romance in your marriage, and, and I think music is a good way to bring romance. And into it's a great way to serenade your wife, your girlfriend, <laughs> your fiance, whatever the case is, and especially if it's a local talented artist like our very own James Faulkner. Welcome to the show, James. Thanks for being here. Thanks for We're having here me. to talk a little bit about your music, and you're going to be performing at Massey Hall come November yeah. 17th. Mm -hmm. So let's start off about you and how you got into music and what what your sound is really. Uh, pretty much, I've been I've been playing guitar now for about uh, 22 years now, pretty much, and it's just it's always been a big part of my life. Uh, I did a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's music degree at Laurier, and then after that, I pursued an opportunity where I uh, was traveling the world, working on a cruise ship, traveling around the Caribbean, wow. and then uh, came back. I was involved with the various uh, uh, tribute uh, tribute bands and cover bands, and then. I just, uh, a couple of years ago, um, I just wanted to give a crack at writing my own music and uh, there's just a few things that happened and a few things that inspired me and it's just, uh, it's been really fun and I'm actually in a lot happier place. Oh, that's, that's good. So awesome. Do you have to wait for those life moments to actually pick up the pen to write that song sometimes? So, well, it's, it's funny you mention that because when I was about 10, about 10 years ago or so, I tried writing it and I didn't take it seriously. Mm. but. Um, it was a bit. It was a bit of a tragic moment in our lives. Like I work. At, I also. I've been a lifeguard as well for the past ten years, just working at a little community center. We're all really tight knit of people. Uh, right. Tight knit group of friends. And uh, there was an unfortunate circumstance about three years ago where two friends of mine were uh, killed in a car accident. And instead of we we were all upset by it, but instead what I decided to do instead, on top of being upset, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the joys that they showed me and I tried to start translating those songs and then. I came across other situations, and before I knew it, I was just I was starting to look at the world in a little bit of a different way, kind of thing. And instead of you know, trying instead of I was just wanting to use my energy to write about how I felt, pretty much. Kind of. Mm -hmm. It's almost so. a different outlet uh, to get your emotions out there in some kind of circumstances, right? It's music yeah. will do that, right? Music will help soothe mm -hmm. the soul, type of thing. And exactly. it's like a journal, but you're singing it. Now, um, landing a gig at Massey Hall—that's pretty awesome. How did you get that? <laughs> it's a, it was actually it was complete luck. I'm usually on. Uh, Craigslist about three or four times a day mm -hmm. and uh, it was just late one night I was scrolling through the musician section and uh, what happened was it just said uh, string section and trumpet player needed for Massey Hall and I was like oh I used to play the trumpet in high school and I was like man I still wish I played that so what I did is I, I sent an email off or I responded to the ad and I was like hope I'm not being rude here I'm a guitar player I know you're looking for a string in a horn section but if there is an opening for me, please let me know. I am interested. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll yeah. take it exactly. Like, Come on, man, I'll take that. So it was funny. I got a I got a response back about a week. Uh, I got a response back the next day, and the organizer, Andrea Esco, she said, "Thank you very much for the email, but unfortunately, I don't have anything for you." So I just wrote it off. And then a week later, I got another email back. She's like, "I might have something for you playing playing any gigs anytime soon." I said, "Well, no. I'm working on write, writing an album right now." Unfortunately, though, uh, I'm not playing the bar scene, but I am connected with the players in Toronto. And uh, anyways, to make a long story short, we were emailing back and forth, and I tried to get her to come down to one of the open jams in Mississauga, and then we both really didn't want to go out that night. So she finally calls me up, and she's like, uh, where are you coming from? And I was like, I'm coming from Mississauga. She's like, why do you want to come down on a Wednesday night to do an audition? I'm like, because I want to play Massey Hall. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay. So we were chit-chatting back and forth, and essentially, about 10.30 at night, I went down to her place. She gave me five songs to learn the night before, and I got the point across. And then it was really funny. Afterwards, she was like, well, if we needed you, we might need you to do this, this, or this. And I was like, okay. Yeah, what does that like, mean? Exactly. <laughs> and then she's like, all right, fine. You got the gig. And I was like, yes. You're like, wow. yes. Baby. So you really so, have to take you know, those opportunities when yeah. they come at you and just, you never know what'll come out of them. You gotta seize them. You gotta exactly. seize those opportunities. Well, the best thing I've learned uh, just being in this, uh, just being in this business is, you know what, the worst that anybody can do is say no, and unless you don't try, then you'll never find out pretty much. And there's right. always going to be doors that are going to be shut in your face, right? You just got to keep going. But new ones and open. Exactly. Yep. And, yeah. you, and you prove that uh, already. So, mm -hmm. um, now you played a, a ton of gigs here in Mississauga, right? Where mm -hmm. have you been playing around in the city? Uh, I've played, I've, with various past bands, I've played everything in the uh, some of my various gigs have included the Hard Rock Cafe in Niagara Falls. I've played some venues down in uh, uh, Toronto, the Central, some of the smaller time gigs. I was actually helping out a local artist last year with uh, Canadian Music Week, exactly. Okay, nice. Um, I've played also as far out as East in the Oshawa Durham area, a few places up north. And uh, actually, it was last year, it was with a cover band. They actually ended up taking me south of the border to play down at Harris Casino, actually. And mm -hmm. I did that gig for a week as well. So I've, I have been uh, around 
I don't want to say around the block, but I have been to various venues pretty mm -hmm. much. Kind but of Massey like, Hall is pretty big. That was, you, that's when, when I got that, I was just like, oh my wow, gosh, I can't believe this. Wow, this is a big this. step. Yeah. Yes. So how are you preparing for it, and are you nervous? Um, well, it's one of those things. In terms of preparing for it, um, Andrea Isco, she's sort of, uh, this lady's amazing. She's convinced her husband that they set up their living room as a rehearsal studio, so they brought in drums, amps, microphones, a full PA system. And she'll have uh, two or three times a week different bands coming in and out, just rehearsing uh, for the parts on the show, pretty much, kind of thing. So I'm usually down in her place because I am involved in three different groups. I'm usually down there about two or three times a week, kind of thing. Uh, in terms of being nervous for it, it's, I don't know if nervous is there. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm over the moon because I think of bands that I've gone to see there. Like I've seen um, uh, the band live, I've seen the Black Crows there, and like, when you think about the history of that place, you've had the pe people like the Beatles, the Stones, who've just walked across that, and it's like, now it's my turn to take a st step You're on the stage. You're going to be breathing mm -hmm. that same air, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm actually on the other side of the stage, so I, I'm, I'm without, words can't really describe oh, how sure, I feel about I this opportunity. It's I just, could only it's imagine amazing. how amazing so. that would feel. So when is this actually happening for all the viewers who might want to be coming? It's uh, November 17th, is November it? November 17th okay. at 8 o'clock, and uh, it's, tickets, are still on, tickets are still on sale, and uh, it's going to be a great night. It's, it's a really cool event because, uh, first of all, it features about, I believe it's 16 or 70 performers from all across the country, so we even have a band coming in from BC, some performers coming in from out east as well. And it's really cool. Number one, it's giving the local music scene a chance to really expose themselves. But all the proceeds do go to a foundation, pretty much called SOS Children, which is in support of setting up uh, communities in third world countries, for example. So, That's so it's, it's a way it's, to go out, enjoy, and give back. Mm -hmm. Road James, exactly. we appreciate for you being on the show. So that is on November seventeenth, two thousand and ten, this year, obviously at eight p.m. Buy at your Nassie tickets. Hall. <laughs> go to www.massyhall.com or get a brochure. All the info is there. Take a look. Eco right. mom's on the show. Yeah. Right. How you can have an eco friendly baby. We'll be finding out <laughs> after the break. That's so going to be stay, interesting. Stay around. I'm excited for that one. <laughs>